Thanks, Armand, again, for uh, joining me today. Uh, to start us off, can you maybe introduce yourself briefly about who you are and uh, what you're working on? Yeah, sure. So my name is Armand. Um, I studied at Berkeley, similar to you, computer science and economics. Um, my first job out of college was actually at the White House in the office of the CTO. Um, the administration has changed and I didn't really want to stick around. Uh, I was doing policy, tech policy, which is one of my passions, but it didn't feel like the right time. So I ended up joining the Chan Zuckerberg Initiative pretty early. I was an early employee there and I had the chance to see kind of what it's like to build technology at scale from some of the folks that were really founding engineers at Facebook. And so got to learn kind of some of the best practices. Pretty early on, I had this opportunity to, along with another engineer, pitch this idea of building a document editor similar to Google Docs, except much more tailored for the classroom. I was on an education team and that idea ended up getting funded. And so through that process, became a product manager um, and spent a couple of years there leading the notebooks team, which was an exploratory products team to kind of build a, this document editor that tried to really focus on improving the quality of feedback that teachers provide in their do in documents and uh, improve how students can um, reflect their um, work authentically. And so spent a couple of years working on that project. And then, then last year, um, I did an Aspen Institute fellowship and then kind of saw some of the emergent qualities of GPT-3 in terms of you know, instruction tuning. And so last year, quit my job to explore startup ideas, went through a whole slew of them um, and initially wasn't gonna go back to ed tech, but then found myself back really reimagining what uh, classroom technology could look like in the era of AI and felt like I had a pretty strong conviction about what that should look like. And so founded Brisk Teaching earlier this year, brought on a couple of folks that I worked with at the Chan Zuckerberg Initiative um, and the rest is history. We are trying to build um, Brisk, which is an AI native ed tech stack. Our vision is of essentially to rewrite the ed tech stack into one that's teacher forward and also AI native. We think that the existing ed tech stack isn't really ready to really support um, AI automation in the way that we think it should and so are trying to re redo that. Cool, great overview. And uh, something that like I, I mentioned this in the email, but like both my teach, uh, my parents were teachers. Yeah. And so, uh, I know teaching is a very hard job. And so I always appreciate people just building the ed tech space because I feel like they're a little behind with the technology and so just making their lives easier um really respect uh the work that you're doing um yeah and you were uh when you were getting this coming off the ground i think you, you mentioned you participated in the south park commons founder fellowship uh you were in the spring 2023 cohort is that is that correct that's correct although i was also an spc member um for a little bit before that so i actually joined spc the summer of 2022 um to explore a bunch of different ideas um to get that negative one to zero and as i was closing the closing on on that zero stage um yeah. south park ended up uh including me as part of their founder fellowship cool can you talk more about i guess um uh, just like why you're excited to like join the south park commons community in the first place and then maybe that second step of uh, actually joining the fellowship yeah so i knew someone that was part of south park commons probably a year before i joined and he was one of the smartest guys I knew. And so, you know, it sounded kind of weird. He was describing SPC to me and I was a little bit like, so what, you're just like not working and, you know, but you're you're kind of spending all your time here. Like, what are you doing? And, you know, like, honestly, I was pretty doubtful, but um, he was such a bright guy and was clearly someone who balanced a lot of the things that I struggled to balance in terms of like being thoughtful about their career. And so I was like, hey, maybe I should check this out. It seems like startup path is one of the paths that I'm really excited about. Let me learn yeah. more. And the more I talked to folks that were part of this SBC community, I realized that it was just this really cool space that more than just being a startup space, it was a it's a community that really helps you figure out what your life's passion is, whether it's starting a nonprofit, running for a, an election, or, or obviously uh, founding a startup. So... Yeah. really 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 feel like i benefited from that and then i uh, built conviction and brisk and um you know was talking to a couple of the partners and they suggested that i applied to the founder fellowship as the next stage of that um of the startup journey and i think that was the completely right decision because it was really able to accelerate me from like having an idea and like a hackathon like 
project to having a full company at the end of it. So definitely yeah. uh, appreciate SBC, this founder fellowship and accelerating me along that path. Cool. And can you talk a little bit about that admission process? So like, did you have to fill out the application again when you're applying to the founder fellowship and then an interview process? And maybe what were some of the questions they asked you during that process? Yeah, so I, um, yeah, you apply through the application. It's pretty straightforward. Um, I don't think it's very long. I, I don't remember spending like a crazy amount of time on it, maybe an hour at most. Um, and yeah, the, the process is basically they reach out to you to schedule an interview. Um, I think I interviewed with Nick and Mitra for my first interview. Um, and yeah, I think the things that they focus on in the interview, generally they focus on the team. And I was a solo founder, so I was definitely an anomaly. But yeah. um, so they focus on the team, the problem you're trying to solve. If you've thought about the like series of questions that most investors would ask you around the addressable market, the go to market, all of that stuff. Um, so you definitely need to get have answers like you. You don't need a pitch deck to apply to SBC, but I would definitely have thinking about which, whatever kind of problem you're trying to solve, at least have those types of like general senses of like, this is how we would go about doing this thing. Um, but yeah, I, I think, you know, SBC is more focused on, are you passionate about a problem? You might not have the exact solution and do you have the domain expertise or skill set to be able to create a solution to that problem. I think that unlike some of the other incubators, I think they're less concerned about the specific iteration of the project that you're working on right now, but more about, hey, are you the right person to fund in this problem space? And so I think I really appreciate SBC's approach because like they don't even expect you to like at the end of the, there's no end of the founder fellowship. Like it can yeah. be a few months or it could be a year. Actually, it's, you know, one of our batch mates raised pretty early in our, in, in the cohort and they graduated really early. Whereas like, I know, I know members of previous fellowship batches that are still at South Park Commons. And so it's definitely, um, uh, it's definitely customized to the needs of the teams, which I really appreciate. Cool. Um, and can you talk a little bit more about like the actual programming? Uh, so I saw on their website, they have like 10 weeks of curriculum. Uh, they have luminary chats and then they also have like milestone based workshops. And you mentioned like there's no endpoint. They sort of tailor it to towards each company. Yeah. Uh, can you talk about like what actually happens in practice or how you utilize the program? Yeah. So, yeah, I think some of the programming is really cool. Like I got to interview Mike Krieger, who is the CTO of, of Instagram. Um, so it was like a very intimate setting, like 15 of us and talking to the CTO of Instagram, talking to one of the co-founders of Airbnb, like definitely they were able to bring in luminaries. And I think compared to other um, incubators, it feels really intimate, right? Like everyone is just a around a conference room, which I think is really, really cool. Um, I think that's really helpful to just like better understand what that night, that zero to one stage is like, because I think often you're doing things for the first time when you found a startup and you want that reassurance that like, no, you, everyone, even the, the, the best entrepreneurs were figuring it out live. And I think that was really cool to kind of hear about all of the founding stories there. I think we do weekly demos, which is a really good way to be able to, I think SBC really is focused on building and like they definitely are looking for technical teams. And so there's this expectation every two weeks, you have to come with something that you, you know, how, you, how have you moved the ball forward for your company? And I think that is like the right type of like drumbeat for, for a technical team. Um, so I really appreciated that. And then just generally like mentorship, like I, I feel like I really benefited from um, the partner that I was partnered with, but also got to be in conversation with all the partners in terms of like, I'm thinking about this, like when is the right time to raise? Like, how do I, how should I be thinking about bringing on a contractor versus a full-time person? And so just, you as a CEO of a, com as a of a startup, you're faced with 20 different decisions every single day. And it's just nice to be able to go to someone and say like, hey, like, what do you think about these options? And so um, definitely really could not have done it. I could not have ra raised a pre-seed round after the Founder Fellowship without the support of South Park Commons. Cool. And uh, who was the partner you were working with? And I guess like, how was that structure? Was it like weekly meetings or was it really just like they were there and you could kind of like engage with them however you saw fit um weekly meetings with mitra um she is one of the partners there um mm -hmm. she's been super super helpful it's also crazy that you know she only has two teams um mm -hmm. so myself and another startup were the only two people that she focused on 
with that type of personalized support, it was just really, really helpful. Nice. And uh, how many teams were in uh, the cohort? Nine. Nine teams. Okay, so super small. Um, and kind of curious, like, were most of the teams already a part of the community before they joined the Founder Fellowship? Or was there a lot of, like, net new teams that just applied and got into SBC Founder Fellowship right away? Mainly new new, new teams. Um, seven out of the nine were not okay. part of the community beforehand. Cool. And then... Uh, Kind of curious, like I saw, I remember seeing your tweet and you just talking about how like instrumental some of the advice was uh, that you received at South Park Commons. Uh, can you share maybe like one or two data points of like what was maybe like the most valuable piece of advice that you received during the program, either from the partner you're working with uh, or maybe another fellow or someone else that you chat with? I'm trying to think about one thing. I think there was a lot of advice around fundraising. Mm -hmm. um, and I think I probably came in with like having not done this, like investors do hundreds of deals, or I mean, talk to hundreds of companies in a given year. And I think there is this intimidation factor around what is standard and what is not standard. And I think South Park, particularly around like driving the tempo of a fundraise and like providing like timelines to VCs in order to um, work within the startups timelines rather than trying to like wait and see what the VC says, I think was really helpful and not something that I would have done by myself. Um, because, you know, you kind of assume that someone, an investor knows a lot more about what a good fundraiser should look like. And I think SBC was really helpful in terms of, you know, setting timelines and being able to execute on, on a fundraise. So that was very helpful. Cool. And uh, what advice would you give to someone who's uh, applying to this SBC Founder Fellowship? I think um, yeah, I think I think the thing that that's unique about South Park Commons is it is really a place for people that are passionate about the problem that they're solving. I think, you know, a lot of other incubators might start with like, hey, here's this technical team. They're going to iterate a bunch, find a problem that has a big enough TAM and having a funded startup is the end of itself. And I think one of the things that's great about SBC is I think they look for people that are like passionate about a specific domain space. Like I wanted to work in ed tech. I had this specific problem. Teacher burnout was what I wanted to solve. Like, you know, ed tech might not have big outcomes, but, or always, but you know, the, the addressable market might be smaller than FinTech, but I was super passionate about it. And I think they're looking for people who are like fiercely, excited about a specific and passionate about a space and um i think that might be something to show during the application process and to have that domain expertise of like i've seen this problem before and here's my take on it and this is why i have a strong perspective on it if that makes sense yeah i think that's great advice um and then is there any questions that i didn't ask about that you think is important for someone considering uh sbc founder fellowship not that i can think of i think uh yeah, no, I think you asked the right questions. Cool. Well, uh, really appreciate your time, Armand. Thanks for uh, joining me today. No problem. Thanks for having me.